In this video, we're going to show you a couple more really useful Excel statistical functions. So our data set will be scores, and they could be exam scores or golf scores. You'll see the difference. If it's a test score, a high score is good. If it's a golf score, a low score is good. So here we have the scores, and we'll name them like we did in the last video because I think that's fairly useful. Then we don't have to keep pointing to the data. So if I select the data there, I can go right here and type the word scores. Okay, so whenever I use the word scores, it's going to highlight that data. Okay, so suppose I want to know the second highest score. Okay, we'll assume they're exam scores. Well, there's a function called the large function. So type equal large, and I would type in scores, so I could use F3. Comma 2 would be the second large score. Comma 1 would be the highest score. So I'll show you that formula. Second highest score was 99. Now, what was the second lowest score? Small function. I'll use that F3 trick. Cisco. So, sorry, not Cisco. We want scores there. It's easier to type scores, I think, here. Then the second smallest score was an 80. Okay. Now we want to know how to rank things in a data set. So guess what that function would be? Well, something to do with the word rank. So let's suppose these are exam scores. So the highest exam score, which is 100, should be have a rank of 1. Now, their golf scores, 100 is the worst score. That's what I would get for nine holes the few times I played golf, and then somebody stole my clubs, and that was the end of it. So if we go here and type in rank, there's a couple of functions. There's rank.avg, rank.eq, and rank. Now, rank and rank.eq are basically the same. And I think Microsoft is trying to phase out rank, so I guess I'll use rank.eq. Now, rank.average, we'll get to what that is in a minute. But if I say rank.eq, okay, now basically the number here, we want to rank this score. And then the ref is our data, which is again going to be scores. Okay, now the important thing comes next. See, descending or ascending. Zero means descending would mean the highest score gets a rank of one. And that's what we want here if these are exams. So I put a zero there. Now I can copy that down. I can double click. The, see, the formula here looks like this. And I can copy that down by double clicking the left mouse. Double clicking the left mouse copies a formula or a col multiple columns down to match the column to the left. So if I copy, actually, I could copy these both down. Double click the left mouse. There we go. So 100 was the best score, and you can see all those formulas. Not that you really need to see them all. Now, if there are golf scores, what would we do? we change the 0 to a 1, because 100 should be the worst score. So I would do rank, okay, dot EQ again. Uh, I think I may have to, let's widen this column here. Okay, sometimes you need to, to see this. So I want to do a rank, and I want to rank that score. Then I'll type scores. Now I want a 1 there for ascending. Okay. Okay, so you can see the 100 was the worst score, ranked 59th, and then the best score was an 80, which was the worst score here. Okay, now the thing that's a bit annoying about this, but we can fix it, is then we have ties. Okay. So see here, two people had a 92, and they both get a rank of 24. Now, if you think about that, once you get a rank of 24 and once you get a rank of 25, but Excel has a way sort of to take care of that. The rank.avg, if you had two people tied for 24th, you each give them a rank of 24 and a half, which I think makes more sense. So let's do that, assuming they're exam scores. So I can type rank dot point to it dot avg. We want uh, the number is right there. And then I want scores. And then I want zero. Highest score would be ascending. Highest score is a one. Okay, so you can see here, these two guys got a rank of 24 and a half, like I discussed, because of the ties. If three tied, I guess it would be 21.33, something like that. But Excel knows to give those tied ranks, which I think, I think it makes more sense to see 24 and a half twice than two 24s there. So that concludes our discussion for now of 
typical Excel statistical functions. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about something that's very important in finance, geometric means and keggers, not beer, but compound annual growth rate. When you're analyzing stock returns or rate of growth of revenue, you need to understand geometric mean, and that's what we'll discuss in the next video.